Comments Ungrounded Yo, channel live Yo, we back live AMX presents Sunday Services Live on Known Radio It's your boy Aaron Max And the beautiful one in front of me Jolie, welcome back and I got a new nigga to the left, man. He's sitting down for the very first time with me, man. Yo, introduce yourself. Yo, the DJ franchise will be here Sunday services. Let's go. And for the next hour, guess what, man? It's all about the DJs, man. And we got a very special guest. But before I introduce him, man, I want to give a big shout out, man, to most hated, man. I want to give a shout out to Yeah X uh, DJ. What the nigga? Why are you running for? Nigga? <laughs> nigga, <laughs> nigga, <laughs> man, fucking he sick to that. That nigga <laughs> fucking jelly, man. Yo, I just want to give a uh, shout out to y'all, man. I respect y'all movement. Yo, y'all got my support. Y'all support me. I support y'all, man. Yo, let's work together. Let's collab. Got you, got but right now, man, I got like one of the illest motherfucking cats up in Philly, man. Yo, and it was like a little hard to get this motherfucker here. You know what I mean? Yo, but let's give it up, man. Yo, spontaneous. Let's go. All right, man, so we got Spontane up in the building, man. Yeah. Yo, co-host for uh, 267. Yeah. Yo, excuse me, tell them. Who's that? Is that you? This nigga. <laughs> oh, this nigga. <laughs> you know, Spontane needs an intro. You know he needs an intro. Yeah, we're going we to save that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, right? Yeah. All right. Oh, is that your intro music, man? I guess. <laughs> all right, wait a minute, hold up. That guy sounded all right. So how do you got your own intro music, man? I don't know, man. You know, Rom is a collector, man. He be having shit that I don't even got no more. You know what I mean? Like, I'm mad to tell him, can I get my shit? <laughs> <laughs> can I get my stuff, man? You know what I'm saying? So, hey, can I just uh, say it is like an quick. honor for me to like, be here doing mm-hmm. Oh, she's a big fan. Okay. I mean, he blessed me a couple times. Right, you know, right. Spontane and I know each other for like maybe two or three years now. Yeah. Well, and uh, who don't know Spontane? <laughs> but I'm telling you the amount of I know. Okay. okay. Can I say what I want to say? Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so Spontane knows that every time I see him, I gotta let everybody know I respect this man to the fullest. Um, I never. Honestly, the only thing I'm gonna say this. Uh, I ain't never met a real one like Spontane before. It's hard to come by. He's, he's a great dude, and uh, you know he had me on his show, Lady Two Six Seven, uh, for Ladies Night a couple of times. You know, and you know that was kind of weird being there. Being there. <laughs> Oh, all right, man. so speaking about 267, yeah. all right, yep. this is my show. No doubt. All right, I just want, listen, you're not going to turn shit around oh, no, no, and try to no, interview. Now no. nah, we're interviewing you, you know right. what I mean? I, I need just to put that out there, you know what I mean? Because I, love. Cause I respect your craft, no doubt. you know what I mean? I respect your craft, I respect your hustle, you know what I mean? Well, the one thing that I do respect is how you support a lot of people out here. Right? You know what I mean? Because you was at B-Side not too long ago, and you had a lot of cats out there performing. Um, not, not B-Side, I'm sorry, um, um, East Coast Wings. Oh, yeah, East Coast Wings. Yeah, yeah. all right, so how, how did you collab with them, you know what I mean, to do something out there? Um, well, <clears throat> my man Alex is the general manager over there. Me and him always had a thorough relationship, and uh, I never even knew about East Coast Wings. And a lot of people didn't even know it existed. It's, it's right over there in the, in the plaza on Aramango and Castle, but a lot of people didn't even know it was there. So we were just trying to come up with ways uh, to, to play, you know, put the place on the map and get it buzzing. So you know, he was like, man, you know, I had to reach out to you, man. I know you can do that. And uh, so we just, I was just, you know, with me, you know, it's a lot of uh, new, new artists in the city on the rise, doing their thing, buzzing. And I was just seeing what I could do to, uh, to give them some, to give them that spotlight. And uh, instead of making it about me and some DJ and stuff, I said, man, let's make it about the artist. Okay, so how did you get your spotlight? Uh, there or just period? Oh, no, I mean, we got to go way no, we back. Gonna, I want to go all way right, back. All right, all right, so, I mean, music has always been in my family. Um, my, my uncle is, uh, is a, my, my uncle that passed away, my dad's brother, is uh, one of the biggest and most famous jazz percussionists in the world, played with Miles Davis, played with John Coltrane. Music has been in my family, you know, for years first introduction into the business uh, my first this is important my first introduction into the business was through a gentleman by the name of Gino Caparelli Uh, he's a big-time producer in the city of Philly Uh, he's from the freestyle era uh, all the way up to now he has his own label called 418 music Universal Um, he got tons of artists that he's got out right now but he introduced me to the music business when I was a kid he put me on a uh, he had he had an artist that he was managing at the time named Deneen and he put me on one of her freestyle records back in the day when I was like maybe 16 years old. And it had me traveling around the country, man, around everywhere. And it's, that was my introduction into the, the music industry. 
Wow. And we're still tight to this day. Like, so that's, he, he, so he that's actually, a transition. That's right, a transition right, from acting, right, you know what I mean, to right. DJ. And he put a deal on the table for me, I'd say probably like two years ago, I just didn't take it. But I did work with uh, one of the artists that he had signed to the label uh, named Margie Martino. And the song is out right now. It's called uh, Just Dance. You can get it on iTunes. Uh, I uh, got the feature rap on the song. And I'm on the song. It's out there. It's going big things overseas here. So, yeah. Uh, so when you uh, so you was out there in mm -hmm. LA, yep. went to North Jersey, yep. you know what I mean, to film with uh, Oz. Yep. Did plenty of features. Don't say a couple, dog, because you naming like shit like I'm like so major, you know. major, yeah, the major movies. It's man, it's just I don't know. Uh, so now you're in Philly. Yeah, yeah, I'm back uh, home. I'm back so home. you're back home. Yeah. What was like your? Okay. What did so, you want to do? So so when I came back home, uh, my my, my boy DJ Flo that I grew up with. Uh, he was uh, spinning on Power 99. Uh, he was Beanie Siegel DJ at the time. And, uh, and then our, one of our other friends that we went to school with, my man Sean Newman, at the time was dating uh, Left Eye from, TL, from TLC. So it was like, man, you know, we should start doing parties or whatnot. And I was like, whatever. So we started doing, we, we made a company, we started doing parties or whatnot, all the clubs downtown. And uh, one, uh, one party we threw, uh, Flo was out of town and our DJ didn't show up. And I was in the midst of moving. So I had all my shit in my car. This was back when, you know, CDs and everything. So my boy was like, man, you gonna have to DJ. I'm like, DJ, nigga, you fucking crazy? <laughs> he was like, man, we don't got no choice. People about to start coming. So the club had CDJs. So I went to my car. I got like all my CDs. I bought them shits in and then we just rocked, man. And and, and you know what? It, it, people loved it. And that was that was kind of like my introduction, kind of getting back into the DJ thing. Uh, so how you came up with Spontane? Like, uh, so my, that was my friend. They just said that I'm a spontaneous person, and it just yeah, I wasn't gonna call myself spontaneous. Which, yes. just, which just happened on the day that you had the DJ. Yeah, it was yeah, a spontaneous just, moment. Spontaneous uh -huh. moment. So that makes sense. So my whole thing is like, so a lot of for a lot of years, right? People used, you know, I, I guess you know, I didn't, I wasn't really trying to be a DJ. So that's the reason why I never like went out and had, you know. Uh, turntables and all of this because I, I was just like yo I'm just doing parties man like I'm just not even really what I'm trying to do but it kind of just happened by accident and uh through, you know just throughout the years I just started learning more you know putting more time into it and uh just trying to you know just trying to have fun with it man because people feel your energy you know what I mean and that's always what I came with I just came with good positive and energy make people feel and good that's my next question yeah you know what I mean because uh I seen you mm -hmm. at uh I forgot what club it was okay um it wasn't a red wine. It was uh, another uh, little Dominican spot. Okay. Uh, I forgot what I forgot what it was. Right. You know right. what I mean? We came through. You know what I mean? We got the bottles. Right. And we were so. Oh, oh, uh, 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 candelas. Uh, candelas. Candelas. There you go. Right. And one thing that I noticed yeah. is, and much respect going out there to this DJ that yeah. I'm about to. You're like flex. Yeah. yeah. Always on the mic, right? Always hyping out the crowd. Yep. So, what made you differentiate yourself from everybody else? Well, because that's what it was all. That's what it always was for me. My whole thing was I had respect for the DJs. I mean, you know, people like Rom, uh, Two Text, my boy, my boys, Flo, and all of them. You know, shout out to Smoke Out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have I have respect for them. So, my whole thing was a lot of them. They were great DJs, but didn't have that part. So I was like, y'all do y'all thing. And I'm a, I'm a host for y'all. I'm going to get this shit popping for y'all. You know what I mean? And back then, there was a lot of money in clubs. So you could pay the DJ and you could pay the host. But throughout the years, you know, with the violence in Philly and, you know, it started to decrease. And, you know, there was a, there was a part, I mean, y'all might not, I don't know how, some, how old some of y'all are, but there was a point in time where you could go, that you couldn't even drive through Delaware Avenue. That's how crowded the clubs yeah. were. There used to be Palmers and Transit. Two major nightclubs across the street from each other, jam packed. Um, it's not the, like that no more. The, uh, the penny nights at uh, was it Maui? Yeah, but the right, penny nights right, at Maui right, on right. Monday. So, so you can, so there was a lot of money flowing. You can have a host, you can have a DJ. It was all up. You know what I'm saying? But throughout the years, man, you know it, it became harder because these clubs they don't want to pay. You know, the, the, you know, you got once it became popular to be a DJ and everybody wanted to be a DJ, it kind of started messing up the craft because you had some guys that just wanted to get in the game so bad, they're like, man, I'll do it for 80 bucks and a, a couple drinks. You know what I mean? And then it made the people who really do it, 
be like, man, I can't come out for that. You know what I mean? And then even for me, it was like, I couldn't even host for nobody no more because I'm like, it, it, it ain't going to pay for it. They're not going to pay for it. So it was like, all right, one or two things had to happen. It was like, all right, well, I need to tighten up my skills and get better. Even if I'm not trying to be this super crazy DJ, I just got to get better, period. You know what I mean? And at the time, I was doing mixtape projects with DJ Tony Two Tex. Now, Two Tex is my man, right? He, you know, great DJ, but he didn't have, you know, the you know, the drive to get out there and, and all of that. So I would do that for him. I said, listen, you put that shit together. You I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take it to you the studio. I'm gonna get on top of it. I'm gonna get the covers done. I'm gonna hustle. I'm gonna get to the street, sit, sit out in the street for us. I'm gonna do all that. You just do that. And that was my way of keeping his name up, you know what I mean? Because I, I respected him. I thought he was dope. So I was like, man, listen, I got you. You know what I mean? And, and that's when me and him started doing stuff together. And um, around that time, uh, he was uh, he was like, listen, man, you know, I got this idea where we can do this uh, this open mic thing at, uh, at J Street Cafe. You know, yes, that's what, uh, I remember that. That's when Burner was. Yeah, yeah so it was like Burner around 2007, something, something like that, you know. Yeah. And um, he was like, man, you know, I'll spin it, you host it, we get, you get the artists together. And uh, I always had a knack for business. So I went and got all the sponsors for us. And, uh, you know, I got, you know, a jewelry company involved, I got Sneaker Villa involved, you know, I was with Villa at the time. And uh, got all these people involved. And through, through that open mic night, man, we, we opened the doors for a lot of people. And that was the beginning of me really, you know, looking out for people in, 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 in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing is, is like, my, you know, introduction into the Latin community was authentic because it wasn't forced. What happened was, a lot of people might not even know this, this story, but how it happened is, I was with Sneaker Villa, right? When Sneaker Villa approached me with this opportunity to spend for them, I'm just telling y'all because people need to know this. There was no money involved. You know what I mean? And I'm, I, I hope we got young listeners listening because you can't always do everything for money. You got Sometimes you got to be able to see the bigger picture and the vision long term. So when I first started rocking with Villa, it was no money. Yeah, they would give me some clothes and some stuff here and there. But, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity and run with it, right? So uh, I say it probably like, a, it took about two years in before I sat down at the table with them and my lawyer and put together a whole endorsement deal and started to get money from them. So now we're talking over 10 years later, still with Villa, still getting a check every single week over 10 years. And this is talking, we're talking about 2004, five, and it's 2017. But Villa opened up uh, the Kensington location and they, they wanted to put me there. So I was like, all right, you know, fuck it, whatever, you know what I mean? I'm like, damn, they gonna put me in the hood like this. <laughs> the hood, hood, right? So I'm like, all right, fuck it. But that was my introduction into the Latin community, you know what I mean? So it was like, if I'm going to be able to, from a marketing standpoint, be able to impact this store, I got to be impactful in this community. So I started to get to know people like Rom and Two Tex and all the, you know, Chill Will and all the, all, you know, Rez, all the DJs in the neighborhood. And I just started building with them. And they just started putting me on, you know, putting me on to the hot artists. But the person, and I, I can't forget this dude, man, the person who's responsible for introducing me to uh, to reggaeton is uh, DJ Cure. Yep, because uh, shout out to DJ Cure, man. Because you the first person. Because you do some uh, reggaeton yeah, sets. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, do yeah. some reggaeton yeah. sets. But he's the, he's the first. Well, it, was, it was this after hour uh, called Infinity on uh, uh, Harvestin and Torsdale, right back in the day years ago. It was like one of the hottest after hours around that time, right? So I used to spin in there, and Cure used to come in and. Yo, you gotta play something. I'm like, what the fuck is a reggae thong, man? I ain't doing this shit. Well, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, whatever, man, whatever. So he just, every week, he just kept coming to me. Man, you gotta play reggae thong. Uh, Daddy Yankee, and I'm like, whatever, man. So then one day, he come, one night he comes in, and he's like, yo, I got this reggae thong record, man. It's uh, it's Don Omar mixed with Biggie. Yo, just listen to it. I was like, all right, man. So I started listening to that shit. I'm like, oh, shit. This shit hot. I put that shit on. All the mommies just hit the floor like crazy. <laughs> so I was like, oh, shit, some other shit. And that was it, man. And he started, you know, like, yo, man, this is who you need to be checking for. And he started getting me the music, man. And, and then that's how that's how that happened, man. 
Uh, so right now, man, yeah. we're about to take a little break. Yeah. Uh, we're about to get into some little music. Right. You want to get behind there or not? No, I'm going to let Ron do it. We're going to talk uh, about a whole bunch of other shit when for we sure. come back. Sure. All right, sure. uh, yo, so I got to pay the bills, man. So shout out to Kiki Vaca, man, who came through here, man. Kiki Vaca, what up? Brought a whole motherfucking case of the Kiki Vaca. Y'all got to get this, man. Gluten-free. So this is like the first healthy vodka that I ever fucking tasted. Yeah. Yo, and the shit's fucking Ciroc quality. <laughs> Alright, uh, so, uh, Spontane, you gotta take a shot before we roll out of here. Okay. Right. You gotta taste this. Yeah. Alright, so, again, we got most hated up in the building. Yo, yo, we got, yo, we got motherfucking uh, DJ franchise in the building. What and of course, we got fucking rhyme. Yo, we got Yoli, so we gonna come back and we gonna get right back into this. Yes, indeed. Back at AMX Presents Sunday Services live on known radio. It's your boy Aaron Max and the beautiful lady in the front of me. This Jolie Jolie. Yo, and today, man, we got a great show, man. We had most hated up in the building. We got Kiki Vaca in the building. We got DJ Brown. We got DJ Franchise. We got motherfucking Watt that just fucking walked through for the Walk motherfucking Badlands. We got my man Philip North that just walked ah, in also, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? He ain't gonna talk. He's just hitting the motherfucking sidelines because he's gonna be here 716, you know what I mean? He's gonna be here next week uh, promoting his everything that he has coming out, man. We got Fab, we got motherfucking Barcelini, we got the beautiful lady right here also. Uh, you can talk into the mic and just say your name. I'm Tara, Pocket Tara on Instagram. There you go, man. And everything is being filmed by Immortal X. So right now, man, we all about to take this shot of motherfucking Kiki Vodka, you know what I mean? The official sponsor of fucking Sunday service. You ain't got one, you ain't giving me that much. That's what I said. You ain't trying to get me motherfucking stumbling up in this joint. Yo, you got yours? I don't want to compute with you. Good? Yeah. Alright, man, yo, salute to everybody. Franchise, where's yours at? No one brought me nothing. Nobody got you. Somebody, <laughs> well, you about to get them. There you go. Alright, so salute everybody. Salute, salute. Come on, Spock. Salute, Kiki Parker. Alright, yo, so Spock. Alright, so how long you been like DJ for? Oh, shit. Uh, probably about 15 years. About 15 years. So, all right, so throughout the 15 years that you've been DJing, yeah. can you explain to us yeah. the whole transition yeah. of how it used to be yeah. to how it is now? Well, I mean, it's crazy, man. Like, how, how it used to be, man, is, uh, you know, I mean, you know, it, I mean, it was like the people that was DJing were just real DJs. You know, that's, that's just plain and simple. Then it, it became popular, became kind of like a fad, kind of like, you had all these people just wanting to get into it, you know what I mean? Not really knowing much about the crap, not even knowing, not even knowing music. You gotta really know music. You know, not for nothing, but that's really where it starts, you know what I mean? And then, you know, it just, it, you know, one thing I can say, like, just speaking for myself, throughout my career is, um, I never stepped on nobody's toes, you know what I mean? Never in my entire career. Like, if I knew someone was spinning somewhere, like, I never went somewhere and been like, hey, Oh, he did? Oh, well, you know what? I'll do it for this. You know, it's, it's people that just messed up, you know, the whole culture, you know what I mean? Like, by doing shit like that, you know? I, I never did that, and, you know, I never took no crazy pains or nothing like that, man. So, you, know, so always, you always, you always stood always by the crap. Yeah, always stood by the crap. You always stood by the crap. Always stood, and you respected the crap. Absolutely. You know, I, <clears throat> so, it's like, a lot of people, a lot of DJs now, yeah. you know what I mean? They got the 1200s. Yep. And they're like, if you don't know how to use the 1200s, yep. You're not a DJ. Yeah. If you don't know how to cut, yeah. you're not a DJ. Mm -hmm. What are your ideas about that? Uh, well, I, I I think it just you know, it's it's evolved kind of like kind of like hip hop. You know, like people say now, okay, well you know you got these mumble rappers or they not rappers or this, you know. But you know, the, the, you know the game is is just evolved. You know what I mean? Um, you know, other people or some people are going to do some things better than others doesn't necessarily mean that this person is not is not a DJ. You know what I mean? If you can blend and you can mix well and you know the music and you know you're doing your thing, you rocking parties and whatnot, and, and not, you know, sacrifice of the culture and, 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 you know, in the same sense, then you are right. Uh, so is there a difference? Because uh, you're at B side, uh, yeah. you are in a lot of clubs. Yep. You know what I mean? Especially a lot of clubs in Sunday City. Yeah. Um, but you also do a couple bars. Yeah. Alright, so is it a difference? You know what I mean? 
Is, is your mindset difference when you walk into a bar for say a big club? Uh, nah, my, my mindset never, never changes. It, it's always, man. It's a, when I, when I, when I, when it's time to go, I'm gonna go. And that don't matter if it's a bar, club, or whatnot. The only difference is, depending upon where you're playing, you might be playing a different, you know, different music or whatnot. But you know, my mindset is always the same. My mindset is always just you know, get busy. Now, so you said that music is very, uh, a knowledge of music. Yeah, it's very, very knowledge it's very important. Yeah, that's. I mean, my my knowledge of music is is vast, and that's that's what's always helping. You know, because I always had, you know, a vast knowledge of music and, and, and across all genres too. Right. Because yeah. I seen the set um, from uh, Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. Yep. And yo, shout out to Jazzy Jeff, man. Yeah. Like one old school, best, like ever, one of the ever, best. Ever, ever. And he played a set. Mm -hmm. Where I'm gonna give an example. Okay. He did um, the freeway joint. Yeah. All right. But before he played the freeway joint, yeah. He played sampled. the song. Yeah, yeah. Where it got sampled yeah. from. Yeah. All right. So it's like, so is that your knowledge of that you yeah. have to know music? Yeah. And I, and that's I mean not just when you do stuff like that, it, it ain't even just about the knowledge. It's just about being creative because as DJs, we all you know. Pretty much, we all got the same songs. Everybody got the same songs, but it's it's how you put your twist on it, how you drop it, you know, how you present it is it, what's gonna you know make you different than the next person. Like for instance, um, Future song Mask Off, right? Everybody got Mask Off. But what I did was I found out where the actual sample came from, and I started incorporating and playing the sample in my sets before I dropped the original, you know, before I dropped Future's Rise. Right. Yeah. And it's just my way of being creative man, and just trying to do something different, you know, for the next person. Right. So, yeah. like, what do you like to actually see different? You know what I mean? Because it's like, I come from 70s, 80s. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was born in 1970. Right. So I, like, grew up and I seen the whole transition. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, to me, it was like, one of the best out there was, like, uh, he wasn't a DJ, but he knew music, Questlove, okay. you know what I mean, Jazzy Jeff, yeah. you know what I mean, like all, it was like when a group had a DJ, they had to have a DJ. Yeah, yeah, the DJ was extremely important back then. Um, I mean, you know what's funny though, even back then, there was different levels of DJ and back then too. You know, you had uh, Cool, okay, like you, Cool Hurt, the founder of hip hop. Yes. He's called DJ Cool Hurt, right? But he didn't cut. He didn't scratch and do none of that. He was a selector. He was Jamaican, so he would just play songs. But it didn't mean that he wasn't a DJ. You know what I mean? He was. It was he just, just knew how to play. It was just different. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing as today. You know, you, you know, you, you got people to do different things. You know what I mean? But as long as you ain't, you know, disrespecting the culture, man. You know, and you got knowledge of music. You know, I, I can respect. It. Uh, so let's talk about the booth for a minute. All right, let's talk about going into the booth. Yeah. Once you're in the booth, yeah. you know what I mean? How do you handle yourself when you have, because even though I, you're one of the biggest supporters of Philly, yeah. you support a lot of people, yeah. but how do you support the dude shaking that CD? Wow. And be like, yo, I need you to play my joint right now. Um, this joint popping, I need you to play this right now. I ain't got no CD in driving my laptop. Yeah, well, you know what, man? I try to support everybody, right? Now, some DJs will be real ignorant to you. You know what I mean? I'm not one of those guys, you know? I'll tell you, listen, take my email address, send me the song, let me listen to it. Let me figure out how I can work it into one of my sets or how I can drop it, and I got you. I can't get to it tonight, but I promise you I'll definitely check it out and we can, and we can go from there. And what are the biggest notes that you don't ask a DJ? You know what I mean? That's one of the biggest things you don't do. You don't ever go up to a, like, like a prime example. When I first met Ron, right, I never tried to rap for him. I never gave him no music. I would just salute him. It wasn't until I got my deal, and after I got my deal, the label pressed up some white labels for me, and then I just went to Ron, and I was like, yo, man, here it is. I didn't say play it. I didn't say play it right now. I didn't say none of that. I was like, yo, bro, you know what I mean? Hey, here it is. And, and I guess because my approach was just, you know, just different and, and, and it was subtle, thorough. thorough, you know what I mean? He, he put the shit right on, like real, real talk, like Ron put it right on, cut it up for me, you know what I mean? Got busy with it, and, and I appreciated that. And, 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 I, and I, you know, from, from the other side, I always was like, 
that's the way I want artists to approach me. So if that's the way I want artists to approach me as a DJ, then that's the way that I'm gonna approach DJ. All right, so Rob, so you gave you, uh, a, was it a sample? I gave Rob wax. Oh, wax? Let's get, let's, 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 at this time in my career, I was signed. I was signed to Sony. That came straight from Sony Studios. It has it on the wax. I gave him wax. You know what I mean? So I tell a lot of people, you want to rap, you want to rap. If you've never had someone invest in your career, or you've never had a deal, never. Like, I don't know, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the way I, the way I feel like, if, if you good enough, if you in the hood, right, and you good enough, uh, I don't give a fuck if it's a nigga that hustling, a nigga that a drug dealer, be like, yo, this nigga popping. We about to put money behind this thing. If nobody ever, ever, ever tried to put money behind you, or you don't put it behind yourself, and you've never had a deal, then you gotta do something else. Cause I'm gonna tell you why. The music industry ain't nothing to fucking play with. It's nothing to play with. Well, it's a very expensive business. You gotta travel around the country. You gotta go to festivals. You gotta pay people. You gotta pay DJs. Let me tell you something. There's a difference between playing, I'm, I'm, I want people to listen to this real clear. There's a Preach. difference between Preach. playing a record and working a record. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Play, I can play your record. I'll play your record. But if you want me to work your record, that's a service. You gotta pay for that. If you want me to post on my social media, you know, uh, play it everywhere I'm at, every club I'm at, all over, that's a service. You have to pay for that. I'll give you a breakdown of monthly well, flex, of what I call flex. I don't do nothing for free. It's a business. I'll play your song, but if you want me to work it, we're talking about a whole other ball game. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so when you talk about working, right? What, what do you mean work? Okay, you gotta look at it like this. I'm DJing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on my radio show, some Thursdays, Friday at the Friday night, Saturday. Saturday after Saturday night, plus my social media. And you got lyrics at Saturdays, correct? Yes, right. So if you want me to expose your you you want me to expose your music to that audience, that's a service. We're in, we're in a different era. We're in the social media. Back back in the day, it wasn't no social media, but now people can get you hot. That's why most hated was able to get hot so fast. Because they got with the DJs, they came to Reds, they came to me, they blew up like that. You couldn't do that shit back in the day. You had to put the footwork in, you had to really grind. It's a different era, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta pay for that service. I work hard to get to where I'm at. And what I've seen in the past, I've seen in the past DJs do a lot for artists, right? The nigga get a deal and forget the nigga even did all of that shit for him. Then you know the DJ don't even get involved, invited to the video shoot. How the fuck you don't invite this nigga to the video shoot? This nigga just blew you the fuck up. Are you serious? So I ain't doing shit for no artist. I, I, there's some people that I might feel, and I might just play your record because I really like it. But other than that, if you really want me to work your project, you gotta come to the table with that bag and we can talk. This is a business. This is the music business. Ain't nobody doing shit for free. Producers gotta get paid, engineers gotta get paid, DJs gotta get paid, and DJs run the industry. Fact. We that, that's break true. records. That's true. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. Um, Cause I posted something up, you know what I mean? That you have to respect the DJ. Right. You know what and I, mean? I put because my work in and I respect everybody. Like people don't understand. Like I got like, I probably got like 20 mixtapes to my catalog that I've done with two techs, other DJs, some myself. I respected everybody and I've helped everybody. You know what I mean? Every time I got an opportunity, I opened the doors for artists, you know what I'm saying? Like when I got the situation at East Coast Wings, I didn't take it to my to, to the head as a DJ. I opened that shit up for the artists. You know what I'm saying? Like even when I was doing, um, uh, what's the joint on Cayuga Street? Uh, VIP Hookah Lounge. I started doing, uh, I started doing listening parties for artists. I had Love the Illis over there, uh, uh, a whole, whole bunch of artists, I can't remember everybody's name, but I had everybody over there um, come, give them a chance to perform, give them a chance to- so uh, You open up avenues. Yeah, get their projects out there. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's what I'm all about. So did you ever like come into a situation when you was like, nah, bro, this, 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 this ain't happening? Yeah. You gotta come back to me yeah. a little bit tight. Yeah, so, I, absolutely, because you wanna know why? 
as a DJ, sometimes we might feel an artist's song, but because it's not mixed and mastered properly and they didn't go through the proper channels to get their music done professionally, we can't even play it. Because the quality is so poor, we like, man, you gotta go back to the drum boy and re-record this and, you know, like, don't cut no, you can't cut corners in this business. You want good music, you gotta pay for it. You want good engineering, you gotta pay for it. You want a good studio, you gotta pay for it. There's no cutting corners. That's why the only time you really ever seen me doing music is when I had a deal. Because I knew that this shit cost a lot of money. That's the only time. Like, when you don't see me doing music, it's most of the time it's because ain't no ain't no situation. You know what I mean? Ain't no situation. You know right, I mean? So now the radio. Yeah. Uh, so you went from acting. Yep. DJ. Yep. To radio. Yeah. Uh, so how did that come about? Um, I started doing radio because uh, Mikey Dredd from Power Ninety Nine. Me and him are really good friends. We all grew up together. Uh, Mikey Dredd's wife is DJ Flo's cousin. We all grew up together from the kids. So. When he, when him, when him and Pooch, Pooch Man got the nighttime show on Power 99, they bought all of the, they bought all of us in. This on some homie shit, like you know what I mean? Yo, we, we, we got the, we got the show. Let's go as a team. And so that's that's where it started. You know what I mean? We just took over nighttime radio, and we was just running with it. We was killing the clubs. This was this was during the time when Philly Club was on fire. I'm talking about oh Delaware, Delaware, Ave. Delaware Ave. Yo, Delaware Ave. Yo, was like was crazy. Trend. Yo, we when you had Saturn's, right? You had the Gran Manzana, right? You had Maui, right? You had everything oh, out there. That, yo, that and, shit and, was motherfucking yeah, yeah, wild. And, and, and if you listen to back to Gotham. Yeah, 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 so you seen the change. Well, All right, so right yeah. now you've seen the change. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like I own Delaware Ave in the All right, so it went from actually carrying crates yeah. to the Serato. Yeah. To everything on the computer. Yeah, you, like back then, like like man, you know, you had to respect the DJs back then because like, you know, everything now is all is all computerized, it's all numbered out. You really had to listen and you were like it it, it wasn't like Okay, on Serato, right? You get you, you see a song is 72 beats per minute. You know the next song you mix it with is 72 beats per minute. It wasn't like that back in the day. Every you now, had every now and then you might have a, a, a white label that might say what the beat per minute was on the song. Maybe, but the shit wasn't there. You had to get a marker, mark the record where you was gonna stop it, cut it, and blend it. And you really had to have an ear to know that hey, this tempo matches this tempo. It wasn't like you can perfectly line it up like like today. So you know you so, had to respect that. Uh, so you think it took away from the craft? I, well, I think it, it made it easier, but that's technology. Technology dumped us all down. I mean, look at our phones. Back in the day, there was no GPS, but you knew how to get everywhere, didn't you? You didn't have everybody's phone number in the phone, but you knew you knew everybody's phone number, right? But but cell phones dumped us down. I don't know. I don't know my dad number. I go this and put dad. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't know it. And, and I don't even think I know my mom number. That's crazy. So, you know, it's like, you know, everything with, with, with evolution, man, is going to it's going to dump down. It's going to be easier. But it's still, you know, if you're a real DJ, you still gonna practice the craft. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, because it's like this, and all all respects to all DJs out there. Right, right. You know what I mean? But I really think they might not agree what I have to say right now. Yeah. But I really think that with the Serato, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, with everything, you know yeah. what I mean? It got watered down. That's um, not my point. Because I want to explain. Okay. You know what I mean? And the reason why I explain is because you know what? Because back then, yeah. Just like you say that everybody has to do, you got to put in the footwork. Yeah. You got to, that's what the DJs had to do back then. Yeah. The DJs actually had to go well, see, to, to, the, to the record store. I agree with you. Yo, flip. I, I, I do flip. flip. I, I, oh my God, I found I it. I, I found you. it. You know what I mean? I agree with you. Stash it, here's it the thing, way. Right? Here's the thing. Like, I'm from the old school though. You know what I mean? I used to go to Funko Mall. I used to go to the South Park, Dark Horse, and all of that, right? Armand's. Armand's. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
So I, I am from the old school, right? And but here's the thing, right? Nowadays DJs want you to give them, they want you to give them they, your whole crates and all of that. I don't do that shit. Me and Ron been cool for years. Have I ever, ever came to you one time and asked you for music? No. Never. You know what I mean? You know why? You want to know why? Because because I believe in, I, I still believe in that old school shit. Nigga, go research your shit. Go download that shit yourself. You got to pay for these uh these DJ sites just like I got to pay for that shit. And that's now, exactly now, what I'm now, now about. if I got a DJ who's a friend of mine and he lost his shit, I'm going to help him get back on his feet. But a nigga that just say, hey, man, you know, just... Give me a, give me some crap. No, bro. Right. You gotta, you gotta do your own homework. Right, so that's that. exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I agree with you. You know what I mean? Because yeah. guess what? Because gotta put in the work. Because back in the '80s, yeah. Guess what? If you did a gig, mm -hmm. you got paid back then. Mm -hmm. You got paid what? Buck twenty-five, bucks or whatever it is. Right. Guess what? You had to invest that. Yeah. In records that you didn't have. Right. Now, you know what I mean? You could just download that shit for free. You know what I mean? So it, it's like back then, you actually really had to put that work. Yeah. You had to go to the record stores. You had to be like, yo, do you have this record? Do you have this? Yeah. So this, that's why I say like today, you know what I mean? It's like, it's real. Yeah, it's, it's a little easy. more than that. It's, it's no exclusives anymore. You know what I mean? It's like everybody gonna have access to the music. But it's just all about how you, you know, if you really brand yourself, the right way, you you you'll stand you'll stand apart from the next man, and and you know like the biggest one of the biggest changes I've seen is just the disrespect of the culture. You know DJs coming in, you know accepting these the, uh, this this these crazy pains. You know because here's the thing, right? DJ equipment for people that don't know is very very expensive. When I really started to be like, you know what, I gotta up my shit and, and take it a little bit more serious. Uh, DJ Tony Two Texas, you know, was like, "Listen, why don't you get yourself a '62?" I was like, "Well, what's, well, how much is a Range '62?" <laughs> and he was like, "Oh man, it's like 2,200." What? God damn! You know what I mean, I was like, "All right, man. All right, fuck it. All right, you know, fuck it." So, you know, you go and do that. Right? Now, 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 that's just the, now that's just the mixer. Then you gotta go and get yourself a, a, a MacBook Pro. That's about that's about another that's about another two grand or more, right? Depending on the gig. Now you gotta get yourself. On the low end. Yeah, 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 on the low end. Then you gotta get yourself either some turntables, some CDJs, whatever you're gonna rock with, right? You talking about anywhere from six hundred and up a piece. You now you up in the five, six thousand dollar range that you just invested in just that. We ain't talking about speakers or nothing, nothing else, right? We ain't talking about whatever you pay for your monthly uh, subscriptions to download the music. We ain't talking about the countless hours you put into downloading music. None of that shit. And a motherfucker want to pay you one fifty? <laughs> man, let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something, man. Like, yo, man, that's like, in all honesty, man, that's where the game really got fucked up. You know what I mean? Because I, I, people don't understand, man. Like, there was a okay prime example. I was DJing at Savoy. Somebody was drunk, spilled their drink on my laptop. I was there that day. Right? I had to take my shit to Apple. $800 bill. Club ain't pay shit. Now, I ain't never sacrificed myself for what I want. I do certain favors for people if I know you and if I fuck with you. But at the end of the day, I'm not sacrificing what I want. You either pay me what I want or I'm just not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I got other things going on. I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? And that's just where I would like, you know, any DJs that's listening, please, man, cut that shit out. You know what I mean? Like, just cut that shit out. You know what I mean? If you go, if you want to be a DJ, go up under the wing of real DJs. Learn. You know what I mean? Learn. Put the work in. You know what I mean? And never sacrifice your worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you remember yeah. your first gig? Uh, that my first gig back in the business was that party I told you back about, where <laughs> I, they didn't show up. But my first, the first gig I did was like a house party. But this is a funny story, right? In my neighborhood. Even when I was little, everybody knew me as like, you know, the, the fun dude to be around. He was always gonna have some fun, throw parties, girls, the whole nine, right? So my mom was like, now my next door neighbor, uh, he was a DJ. He was a real DJ. Like he used to DJ with Cash Money, all of these, right? And me and his, me and his nephew was was was, was tight, right? So my mom was supposed to be going out of town. My mom and dad was supposed to be going out of town on a little vacation, John. And I was waiting for them to leave. I told the neighborhood, like, yo, my parents is leaving. We about to get this party popping, you know what I mean? 
So, so I told my man, and he was like, yo, my uncle, man, you know, he, 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 uh, he away too, man, so I'm gonna get the equipment and bring it over your crib. So, so my mom and dad left, left. We got the turntables, we sat that shit on the table. We had the, the big, everybody, anybody that's from back in the day know these speakers. These speakers are called Bull Frog. Them, them motherfucking speakers was crazy, right? So, we had- Way like a yeah, thousand pounds. Whoa, man, it was like five of us trying to carry that. Yeah. Yeah. Jumbo. So we, we bring this shit in the crib, and we start rocking. Yo, the whole neighborhood in my house, man. Niggas are sitting on my step, like, oh, try to go upstairs, man. Get that, cut that shit off. <laughs> so, you know, after a while, I'm like, man, this shit going on. Then the fucking cops show up. Man, everybody start running out the crib. I ran out my own crib. I'm like, I'm running out my own crib. Behind the cops, I said, oh shit, that car looks familiar. My mom and them, behind the cop car. My aunt got sick. They never made it out of town. My next door neighbor called the cops on us. My mom told the cops, oh, you can leave. I got this. You know what I mean? So, man. Oh man, let me tell you, man. I thought everything was cool. My mom had a real. My mom is one of them old school moms. She fuck you up whatever she get her hands on. Of course. So we all grew up. She was calm. Everybody left. You know what I mean? She was calm. I was like, okay, I I, I dodged the bullet. I started to go up the steps. All of a sudden, I see this big ass broom coming at my head. Oh shit! Bust my ass, man. (laughs) That was my first gig, man. You know what I'm saying? I got my ass busted, but. The, the hood loved it, you know what I mean? The hood was talking about that shit for days, man. Alright, so we gonna talk about like right now on the change of the DJ. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, I seen uh, a little documentary. Yeah. Where uh, KRS-One uh-huh. said that he went to Hurt. Yeah. Gave him his record. Mm-hmm. And then Hurt was like, yo, this shit's whack. Yeah. Your record was never played. Yeah. Now, with that, Today, you got SoundCloud, uh, all, all, yeah, mix. You have a whole bunch of stuff, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, a whole bunch of other things out there. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, how do you feel that that took away from the DJ? Um, well, for a long time it did, but I think it's, it's shifted back. I think the power is definitely shifted back to the DJ now. DJs are, you know, recognizing their power, you know, especially with social media, what they can do to help an artist get to the next level. The, the, you know, the difference is now, you gotta take care of these DJs. You know, DJs have had enough, man. Like, I've really, I've literally seen DJs go in for artists and then the artists get on and forget that that DJ did all that they, that they did to break the artists. So now, you know, you really, you just gotta take care of them. But you know, if you take care of the DJ and you're serious about your career and your music is tight and you and, and that DJ knows that you put some, you know, you put some money into what you're doing, support you. Well, there ain't been an artist in the city that, that, that I really haven't supported, man, at, at some point. I mean, uh, so you know a lot of uh, people out here that's actually been coming up. Oh yeah, uh, I know them all. Yeah, I'm happy here to the streets. And we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Right now we're about to take a little music break if you don't mind. Yep. Yo, so right now franchise. Alright, let's go. Let's get it. Yeah. Sheesh. We got, we got, we got a lot. Yeah, so, like, when we come back, 